Welcome also to the audience to my presentation. It's my first time at the Connect conference and it's really a pleasure to be here. I enjoy a lot uh, meeting all of you and have interesting discussions and also the great presentations. So uh, introducing the company I work for, Roda and Schwarz, I can't do it even better than you have done it uh, before. So we are known as a test and measurement company, uh, founded 88 years ago, still family owned mid-size with more than 12,000 employees operating worldwide. And you can see we are an engineering company. We have a lot of patents and this is really the DNA of our company. This is how we call it. And when you, when you work with us, when you are our customer, our partner, you realize it immediately, we are all engineers. So talking about 5G, we have heard a lot about public network use cases. We heard about critical, industry so far and I want to really focus on the use cases in critical industries that got enabled by 5G. And uh, you see a couple of use cases here that specifically the features we see in 5G like higher data rates, the low latency helps to also bring 5G to the critical industries. Giving an example and selecting the ports, you see in the picture of the ports, you see a remote control of the crane, so the crane operation. And usually this is done by a single controller operating multiple cranes. And in order to do so, there are HD video streams, there are cameras on the cranes that are transmitted to the operator. So this requires high uplink data rates. So 5G is the technology that's boosting into such private industries. And the warehouse examples where you have the collaborating robots that makes the production environment more efficient, more mobile, more agile as well. These are just a couple of examples that we are having. So from a testing perspective, as I said, we are a testing company. From a testing perspective, what are the differences compared to a public mobile network testing? So first of all, if you look at the critical infrastructures, the quality is much more critical because it has an immediate impact if something goes wrong. It's not just a call drop that you are experiencing as a user. This is bad enough, but this is not life-threatening or critical in any way. So also this is impacting the assets of the testing that we are seeing here. Security, I will come later to that. Security is a must in that environment. The reliability, there are criteria defined by the five nines and the six nines that uh, tell you about the number of uh, call drops that are tolerated. And in the six nines, it's one, one uh, call drop in a million of calls that is just allowed to go wrong in such a scenario. So imagine what kind of criteria they are pretty tough specified in the scenarios here. And of course, also talking about the latency, many examples. And this requires also new and innovative kind of testings. And I will talk more about the interactivity type of testing. Because the testing so far in the public networks is about the quality of experience of a user. So it's how you experience your perception of the mobile network. The quality in the industry area is a quality of experience from a robot perspective. How to define that? So we call it more a quality of a service. And you, of course, you can reuse a lot of tests you have used before, but also you have to invent and come up with new test scenarios. So showing some prominent solutions, some of you have already uh, those in use, is uh, on the left-hand side, you see uh, our scanner solution. You can do this for uh, an easy device independent passive testing to do coverage testing, to do EMF kind of testing or radio quality type of testing. And this helps you to give a very first impression about how the network conditions are looking. And of course, you can also use this in a more active type of testing, connecting an industry mobile to it, or on the right hand side, you see it connected with a, with a typical smartphone where you can do signaling type of testing, quality of experience, video call quality, and further on. And these devices are already heavily in use and are developed further also by the teams. Talking a bit more about the interactivity type of testing. So why is the interactivity type of testing so important? And it's also driven by the industry, but not just by the industry. Also, it helps to tell and to measure 
the key factors that we are seeing in 5G as part of the interactivity, which is the bit rate, so the data rate, it's the latency, and it's also the continuity of the signal. And in order to make these criteria easy, transparent, and measurable, we have invented a kind of interactivity score, making it also comparable, and that is a generic for uh, the different use cases. So looking at my first example, this is e-gaming. And you can see also from the blue curve how the latency is weighted for e-gaming, because there are different latency requirements. So in an e-gaming, latency definitely plays a role. Data rates play a role. So you can tell from the blue curve how this looks like. Now comparing this with a use case where we have different latency requirements, but also where interactivity is required. And this is a VR retail shopping. So if you imagine VR retail shopping, if you see your picture in the mirror a couple of milliseconds later, it doesn't has an effect. You would probably even not realize that. So you see the blue curve is moving out to the right because the round trip time here is having a different impact. But still, it's an interactivity use case. So also, you get an interactivity score that you can compare with another and that tells you about how good your interactivity is in such a use case. And an example with a very critical latency is from a robot in a factory environment. So in that environment, we have, and you can see this from the blue curve tied to the left, we have a very critical latency requirement. And these kind of tests help you to, with one generic method, in order to compare and to also tell and measure the quality of the network you are having also in critical industries. It's used in ITU, it's uh, specified in Etsy and so on. So these are standardized methods that we are having. We heard about AI before and techniques of machine learnings. And one topic that I think all of us are um, are taken care about is with all of the amounts of data we are collecting every day, how can we better use the data in order to do predictions, to use machine learning, to really work with the data and take input out of the data that we are already having. So ideas are, and there are anomaly detections that helps to optimize the network by simply using what we have from the data collected. And another idea that we see is very critical in the automotive industry, when we talk about a call stability score, you can predict areas where you have a higher risk about a call drop. And why is this important? Think about autonomous driving. In an autonomous, in an autonomous driving, the car is really controlled. Why? And the car, the connectivity, and the connectivity the car is having to the outside is essential. So if you know the car is entering an area with a higher risk of a call drop, you might take countermeasures, like the driver has to take control again. You get out of the, of the safe driving mode, things like that. And another example, of course, is also about the capacity prediction in the network, and that helps for the capacity planning in the network. And all of these examples, are consisting of heavily data that are collected, and machine learning is one of the innovative techniques that helps us really to get the input out of the data. I talked about security before. So if we talk about security, security at the moment is a kind of a buzzword because there are so many different types of security. You have to take care about device security. So you have to ensure the devices you are using in the network. You have to take care about the network security itself. But also, in this example I brought for you, if all of this is secured, the end-to-end -end security is really mattering, and this consists also of the data and the data flows you are having. So these enormous amounts of data between all of the connectors' devices, you have to monitor them in order to understand and see if there are an an um, anomalies in the data. And in, it could just be a simple interference, but then it might impact your production flow. You might have to have a reaction on that. But it could also be a jamming. It could be an attack from a hacker that is just visible in the data. And for this, there is a solution we are working on based on the DPI, a deep packet-based uh, inspection, really having a look at the data and doing a monitoring on that in order to provide solutions. 
And this is contributing to the end-to-end -end security part that is important. And what I'm talking about is not just theory. I have shown you the measurement equipment before, but also as we are pioneers in the technology, we have been very early in acquiring our own 5G frequency and apply it to our factories in Germany, in Teisnach and in Memmingen. And on the one hand, this helps us really to get first insights about how to use a private network to be really the end user of a private network in a factory. So what problems are our customers having with that? How can we learn? How can we test our equipment? How can we better support our customers and partner with the industry? On the other hand, of course, as we are the owner of the production, it also helps us to keep our production efficient and also cost optimized and running and making use of all of the nice uh, 5G features. One of the first examples we tried out was really the AGVs we had in the productions to put on the 5G network. And not just in our own production, what matters is really conferences like that where we connect with the industry. We work with industry partners in the different areas, in automotive industry, we work with research institutes like the Fraunhofer, TU Dresden, as we are in Dresden here. We have very close corporations, but also in Munich, in Kaiserslautern and worldwide. And for me, it's really key that the industry gets together and exchange also on the challenges that we are better able to address it together. And coming back to the end perspective, so the end user perspective, what else matters for an end user perspective when it comes to a private network or when it comes to a dedicated network. It's also a slim and a dedicated and optimized for the dedicated use case solution that can be offered. And on the next slide, ORAN might be a possible solution for that, so the open one. And using the quote we have from the mobile experts here, according to them in three years from now, 86% of the radios that will be shipped have an ORAN front house specification adapted. So can you imagine 86%? This is quite an enormous amount. This affects the testing. This affects the industry if this trend is coming. I know a lot of you might have a kind of a deja vu. I have another deja vu for you because Open One has been called CIPRI and was specified number of years before. At that time, it didn't pick up. But also, we talked a lot about the value for the end user and the end use cases. And open one with what we see in 5G, we see a lot of activities at the moment. So I would be interested to get your opinion on the open one and also my colleagues here. So don't be shy after the presentation. Please let me know if you don't share our opinion on the activities on all one, if you see it different or if you agree. I would be really happy to have discussions with you. And I brought another déjà vu for you. It's the, sorry Manfred, I have to call it déjà vu. For me it's a déjà vu because I'm 20 years in the, in the industry as well. It's the 5G broadcast. So the 5G broadcast was called EMBMS before. And at that time also it was not the right time for the use case. But also here we see a lot of activities ongoing. We had at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, we had a demonstration with Qualcomm at our booth that really attracted a lot of people. So bringing 5G broadcast could be one possibility when bringing the mobile networks and the broadcast closer together in optimizing the network performance. These are the different use cases you can see there. The streaming of sport events, of large public events is maybe the most popular use case, but there are other use cases. Think about a connected factory where you want to do a software update to all of the IoT devices you're having there. Yes, of course, you can do this in a one-to-one, one -one, but you can also do this in a kind of a multicast scenario that you have one transmission like a data shower to, to, um, to the devices or uh, same to cars. So there are use cases that are coming. And the last one is definitely a very interesting one as well. Imagine, and unfortunately we had situations like that recently, imagine the infrastructure is completely down. How to communicate to the people? There are public warning systems, but they rely on the infrastructure. But a 5G broadcast is also a possibility to reach out to the people in case of emergencies. As soon 
as the infrastructure is down and we place that communication until the infrastructure is back and really get information to the public. So the key potential we see in the new applications and also in helping to increase operational efficiency, but also by applying this multicast one to multi approach instead of a one by one approach, this helps really to get energy efficient, to save costs and also to work on the carbon footprint. And also for this topic, I have not heard about the 5G broadcast in the other presentations today. I would be very curious, and we have our experts here as well for this, in order to get your opinion. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thanks a lot. Uh, I will be here the whole day and I listed our experts. We have our team of experts here as well in the different areas. So please reach out to us. Let us know your feedback, how you see it. And also let us know in case you see areas we can work together. Thank you so much.